and welcome. Uh, we're live at NIRIX uh, here on Friday, um, first day of the workshops, and we're very pleased to have with us Noam Brown, uh, main author of the Cicero work by Meta AI, uh, which uh, became very popular. Uh, Want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Noam Brown. I'm a research scientist at Meta AI in the FAIR group. Um, did my PhD at Carnegie Mellon, and um, I've been at FAIR now for about four years. And uh, uh, is the rumor correct that you've been a poker player before? Uh, I, was, I was a pretty bad poker player before, but I worked on poker AI during my PhD. Right. So, so basically, did, did, like, they motivate you to, to want to get perfectional. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So if I can't be a good poker player, they have to make a good poker player. Exactly. And how has your Europe been so far? Uh, it's been very, very busy. Uh, talking to a lot of different people. It's been, uh, I've been very happy with the reception of the Cicero project. Uh, People, it's a very cool project, to yeah, be honest. Uh, yeah. we, were, we were, you know, wondering how it would be received by the wider community, and it's uh, been, been more positive than anyone we were expecting, so we're really happy to see it. It's a very cool work, and, uh, and I think a breakthrough uh, in, in some sense, right? Also for you, you've been working about it for a while. About so three, about three years uh, For the people who are not uh, familiar with this work, uh, you might describe it a little bit what diplomacy is and like what you guys did with the uh, Cicero work. Yeah, so Cicero is a, it's an AI that plays the board game Diplomacy, which is this complex strategy game that involves natural language negotiation between the players. So there's a big emphasis on negotiating and, and uh, talking to the other players, and this is all done in private conversations. And um, after the conversations are completed, all the players will execute their moves simultaneously. And a big element of the game is like you have to work with other players in order to succeed. You can't win by just by just by being on your own. And so you have to like work out alliances, work out like who's going to support who into what territories, and people can promise all sorts of things, but then they can go behind your back, make an alliance with somebody else, and not tell you, and then you only find out when all the moves are revealed. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a mix between Risk, Poker, and the TV show Survivor. So you kind of have to model this uh, human psychology aspect of it uh, right. very much uh, into uh, uh, algorithm. Yeah, it, it, I, I think the best way to describe it is like the game is really about the people rather than the pieces on the board. Excellent. And can you explain a little bit because my understanding is you very much leverage a lot of the existing uh, uh, language models, uh, you know, advancements, and and then kind of like merge it with a lot of the reinforcement learning uh, um, self-play ideas. So like, how do you uh, can you go a little bit more in depth on how you? Uh, uh, make those things work together. Yeah, so the challenge in diplomacy is that we need an AI that is able to have conversations with people in a very human-like way, uh, but also it needs to have a very sophisticated understanding of the strategy for the game. And so it needs to discuss this sophisticated strategy as well. And so what we do is we train a dialogue model that it takes as input a plan for itself and for the person that it's speaking to. Um, so the dialogue is conditional on this action for itself and for, and for the partner. And then we can do self-play reinforcement learning and planning to come up with a good strategy for the game that accounts for human behavior. And then feed from once we compute that policy, we can feed an action for that policy into the dialogue model. And it will speak in a way that's consistent with the plans that it has. And at the same time, it can also go the other direction. So the dialogue that it observes from uh, that it, the conversations that it's had with the other players on the board will inform what it thinks everybody's going to do, and that will, the planning and, and reinforcement learning will take that into consideration when it's forming its own. And uh, how do you um, uh, implement these sort of conditional text generation uh, on the language modeling side? Is so it like purely prompting, purely uh, fine tuning? Um, we start with a very uh, general uh, language model that was trained on a wide, wide portion of the internet. It's a 2.7 billion version of our model. And then we fine tune that on 120,000 games of diplomacy, 40,000 40, of which have dialogue. Uh, so that's about 13 million messages. And so that gives us a, 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 an AI a, a dialogue model that is able to, con to converse in a, fairly, in a very fluid, you know, This is not self-play, this is like uh, actual human. This, this, this is supervised learning on human data, yeah. human beings. Yeah, so it can talk about the game of diplomacy in a very human-like style. It can use the abbreviations, the, the you know, all, all the, um, just the casual communication style of humans. But also, um, we can we train it in a way that allows us to, con to condition uh, its generation on a plan. And I was curious, how, how transparent is kind of the, the, the strategy that is followed? Uh, and how much are you actually modeling sort of the state of play? And how, how much is it just like a, a deep learning based uh, policy? Uh, what do you mean? 
<coughs> like, do you have an explicit model of the, let's say, of the strategy of, of the Very symbolic representation of the kind of born state and condition and that, or is it all just um, implicit learning on, on the imitation of, of uh, human being? It's a bit of it's a, it's a mix of both. So we do we do supervised learning on the human data. That's behavioral cloning, yeah. um, and basically supervised learning on the human data, and that gives us a prediction of what we think everybody's going to do and what what we think they think we will do. But we can improve on those predictions by adding reinforcement learning and planning. And so uh, we can actually we found that if you add um, reinforcement learning and planning in a way that is regularized towards that supervised learning policy then you end up with a better model of human play than supervised learning. And so we can use that model then to predict whatever it's going to do, figure out what action, what strategy best responds to that, and then that forms the plan that we have in the game. Um, so one of the things that uh, I found interesting about the, the reception of the release is that in a sense, uh, I felt like both the people who are very much you know, championing scale and self-supervised learning mm -hmm. and you know like the Gary Marcus type of uh, people were very much celebrating it because like both of them said well yeah it's highly proves structured point, proves our point like proves <laughs> my point it's super structured you know like you need structure like to inject structure and domain knowledge to solve a complex task and you know other people are like yeah it just did you know it just data all the way down <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so like where do you like what is your kind of take on this whole sort of um, you know um, yeah, like... Yeah, it's, a, it's a good point. This is actually something we were really happy about. That, like, it, seems like, <laughs> it seems like people that normally would disagree very strongly seem to both love the project. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, I mean, I, I think that it's true that like the way that um, we succeeded was um, it, it's with an uh, approach that combined very different approaches, but also it used a lot of data. It leveraged very heavily on the bitter lesson. You know, we like tried to rely on data and compute and scaling. Um, but there were certainly limitations for like you can't, you know, how do you scale intelligently? I guess is, is part of the problem. Um, I think that follow like what we're trying to do here is like have a proof of concept that like, pushes the envelope of like what we think is, is possible with AI, and it's not like necessarily the perfect approach to take uh, for for approaching AI for diplomacy. I think there, there you know there could be room for for uh, different approaches or improvements, and you know so it. We're hoping that the research community is able to like use this to learn something useful from this, and is able to like iterate on this to make something you know more streamlined, better, um, or or just just better create, maybe it's less streamlined. How do you see like the uh, uh, potential sort of um, intuitive implications for uh, these kind of models forming actually a line of theory of mind and being able to distinguish like what's true and what's not true in the in the actions of the other. I'm sure they, they must have some sort of, uh, the agents must have some sort of notion of not really re really revealing the internal strategy and not really believing what the other one says, right? Yeah, I think that's kind of implicitly captured in the in the AI. I mean, when it, somebody tells it that it will do something, like if somebody says to the AI, oh, I'm not going to attack you this turn. Well, the AI, first of all, understands that based on the, human, the historical data that it has, that when people say that in that situation, maybe half the time they're lying. Right. Um, and so we'll understand that not necessarily believe that. But even beyond just the, the supervised learning aspect, it's able to understand that like, okay, well this person has certain incentives um, and you know certain value, certain goals, which is to maximize their expected value, and these actions that are inconsistent with what they said would help them maximize their expected value. And so it's probably more likely that they'll take those actions mm -hmm. than what my supervised learning would say. And it also is able to recognize that like, maybe the AI generally has no intentions of attacking this person, um, but the, the, um, the human would think, you know, given the structure of the value functions and everything, that it will attack it. The AI will understand that you know, this person might not believe it if it were to say, like, hey, I'm not going to attack you this turn. And so you know, whether you call it theory of mind, um, you know, it depends there's on how you define it. There's a certain representation of the goals and, but, uh, yeah, and the rationality there's, there's of the certainly, other. Yeah, there's certainly a reasoning about the beliefs and the goals uh, and the intentions of others. Um, so if I remember correctly, um, in your previous talk that you did on Monday about this uh, project, which was very interesting, uh, you mentioned that um, that Cicero is uh, only trained on, uh, is, is never trained to deceive, uh, object, uh, like, um, is, is never trained to perform actions, like uh, outright uh, lie, um, uh, to you know, receive uh, you know its collaborators or adversaries. Mm -hmm. um, can you? Um, I, I felt like at the time when I when I heard that there was a little bit of a 
um, surprising. Cicero, Cicero is a gentleman. Yeah, <laughs> but it was a bit of a, of a surprising uh, finding. Um, can you like, is, uh, like clarify what uh, that piece of uh, you know like how that was and like whether you think that's surprising or not or like how how you think that. Yeah, so I think a lot of people, when they uh, hear about the end of diplomacy, they view it as a game of backstabbing and betrayal. <laughs> but, but really, if you talk to experienced like, diplomacy players, expert diplomacy players, they say that diplomacy is really a game about trust. It's about being able to build trust in, with players in an environment that encourages you to not trust anybody. And so the best players, they will lie sparingly. Um, now, Cicero is specifically trained to uh, it, it's a, it takes it takes the intentions as input, so it takes an action for itself and, and for the other player's input to its dialogue model. And the dialogue model is trained specifically to always communicate, it's, uh, always be always send a message consistent with the intentions it plans to take. Um, so it's not if it if the intention says like I'm going to move to to Burgundy, it's not going to. Or, I, mean, I can't say for sure, but like it certainly would be very difficult for the dialogue model to say I'm going to move to Picardy. Um, and also, the action that is fed into the dialogue model is always the action that it actually intends to take. So, now that doesn't mean that it's necessarily 100% honest. Like, if it's planning to attack somebody, it might not tell them all the details about how they're going to, how it's going to attack that person. So it's not going to tell you like, oh, by the way, here's all my moves, and then you can figure out how to defend against it. It will strategically withhold information. It could also change its mind. So it might honestly tell you that it's going to do something, and then. As the turn progresses, it actually changes its mind, and it won't go back to you and say like, "Hey, by the way, I changed my mind." Yeah. <laughs> so, so this kind of like uh, strategic mission uh, of information is, is, you know, that that is some, something you can do. Um, and but you know, it is always feeding into its dialogue model the intention it plans to take, and it's always it's trained specifically. We actually filter out lives from the training data for for its dialogue generation. So it's. Be very difficult, uh, if not impossible, for it to like send a message that's very contradictory to what it actually intends to do. So uh, um, now you've achieved this this breakthrough uh, in, in this game. What what are kind of next steps for you uh, in this uh, uh, multi-agent uh, strategy uh, area? Uh, I'm actually taking some time to think about that. So in December, I'm taking vacation for the whole month. Why is it? I'm going to relax a little bit for once. And I'm going to... Uh, Europe's detox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's been a lot of breakthroughs across the field. And I'm, uh, I feel like I've been very focused on, on this project for a long time. And I want to take some time to like really absorb what's, what's happening across the field, figure out what I could do next. I think when we decided on diplomacy, you know, this was back in 2019, and we saw what was happening with like language models, and we saw what's happening with like Dota 2 and Starcraft. Yeah. And and we felt like, first of all, there's an opportunity here because there were breakthroughs in language and strategic reasoning, and also this was something that I think people did not think would be possible, especially in 2019. And we felt like if we if we could succeed in this, then it would be a genuinely impressive result. And so I think that's what I wanted. That's the approach I want to take again. I want to like get a sense of where the field is at, try to find something where like... What's cool in three years? <laughs> what, what would be a genuinely impressive result in three years that people yeah. are, I don't think is possible today, or, or, won't, or might not even be possible in three years, yeah. and then figure out how do we, how do we approach that. Just one more question, uh, kind of going back to um, your motivation. Why you started, do you have any applications in mind? Like, is, is the, the end goal to win a diplomacy, or is the end goal to develop systems that have real um, sort of good impact applications? Uh, the, the end goal is definitely not diplomacy. We're using diplomacy as a sandbox to test these techniques. But I think well, there's always, you know, when you look at the, the history of games and AI, we've always used these games as like benchmarks and challenge problems for measuring these techniques and with the promise that one day they will enter the real world. And, you know, that's always uh, been several steps away, right? Because you know, we say we want to make AIs that can cooperate with humans in the real world, and yet we're beating humans in competitive games in these like abstract in these abstract worlds. And so, I think diplomacy takes a big step in the direction of applications because it's no longer fully competitive; it's now actually cooperating with humans, not just competing with them. And it's also doing that through natural language. Is you know that's not an abstract space; that is a, a real space of, of, of communication and collaboration that humans use in the real world. So. We're still, you know, not fully there. We still like uh, have a game board and everything, but 
it's certainly a big step in that direction. And even though we're not looking at applications, we're hoping that other people can build on this to, to apply it. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that someday you will maybe uh, take the transcripts of the United Nations uh, meetings and uh, <laughs> insert an agent in there to guide it in a little bit better direction for humanity. So, uh, yeah, you never know. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, um, thank you so much uh, thank you for, for the interview. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Interview. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next uh, work that you put out.